have entered the faith zone with Pastor Leon Cromartie, where you will be taught how to live the skillful believer's life, applying your faith to everyday living. Verily, I say to you, if you say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Welcome to the Faith Zone. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to the Faith Zone. I'm Pastor Leon Cromartie from Fayetteville, North Carolina, and pastor of Overcoming Faith Christian Center. And we are here to train and mentor every believer to become effective using their faith and overcoming every obstacle we face in life. First John 5, 4, the word of God declares that we are born of God and overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. God have dealt to each and every believer a measure of faith and praise God when we become skillful in using it, there is nothing that we can't overcome. There is nothing that we can't get our God to do for us. And we welcome you now again to the faith zone, praise God. Hallelujah. All right, the name of Jesus is above every name in the earth. And Lord, we just want to declare right now that there is no one greater than you. We've tasted and we've seen that there is no one greater. Mm -hmm. I have to tell the world how great you are, how your love has drawn me, your mercy kept me. Where would I be if it wasn't for your grace? That's not You are mighty, there's no one greater than you, than you. Throughout the ages, your name has conquered all. There's no one greater than you, than you. Who can compete with a heavy weight like you, Jesus? Every struggle must bow at your name. The number one champion today, nobody. of God's power in the faith zone. Pastor Leon Cromartie will interview people of faith who have evidence and proof that the name of Jesus is above it and that the faith of God works. Praise the Lord. 
Lord, we want to welcome you to the Faith Zone. I'm Pastor Leon Cromartie from Overcoming Faith Christian Center in Fedville, North Carolina, where we endeavor to train every believer how to use this faith to overcome every obstacle they face in life. Life is not always fair, but if we know how to use the faith that God has given us, we will overcome all the unfairness of life. We are so thankful to have with us today our guest, a great member of Overcoming Faith Christian Center, Sister Carolyn Williams from the great city of Hope Mills, North Carolina, and a wonderful husband, Brother Hurley Williams. And back in De on December the 9th, 2015, a very traumatic experience took place, and we want to talk about that today and share it with you today. We believe it will encourage your heart. Amen. It will encourage you to continue to believe God, fight for what you desire, and so we're going to proceed now with this great testimony. Now, Sister Carolyn, you called your pastor about 5 o'clock in the morning and say, Pastor, the doctor say, call the family in. You remember that? Yes, sir. Yes. Talk to us about that and what was going on at that time. Well, Hurley had come in from work on a Thursday and he had problems breathing. And we then go to the hospital and they placed him on the second floor. And the doctors came to the room and they had put him on an oxygen mask, one of those big oxygen masks that really sealed to your face really tight. And um, he couldn't, still couldn't breathe even with that mask on. Uh, they did that, they left him like that one whole day. The next day, which was the, I believe it was, I want to say the 8th, but then the doctors came in and told me that there was nothing else they could do for my husband. They had two different specialists. They said there was nothing else that they could do for him, and they moved him from his room into the unit, which is ICU. Uh, he got in there. Now, when I left, when we left the floor, I could talk to him. His eyes was open, but if he wanted, he could muffle his voice through the mask. But when I got to intensive care where they had put him, he was shut down. There was nothing else going on. And he said, uh, the doctor said that Hurley wasn't going to make it. And I said, how's he not going to make it? He was just talking down on the floor. Now you put him in a unit, and now he's not going to make it? He said, Ms. Williams, uh, Mr. Williams' lungs have already gotten hard. That he... We can push the air in, but he can't push it out. So he is not going to make it. So we need to go ahead and just unplug him. I told the doctor he was not going to unplug my husband, that it was not his time, that we have two ch adult children and we have four grandkids, and Hurley needs to be there for them grands and for me. That this was, our, I think this was our 40th year marriage in 2015. And... He was like, well, ma'am, I'm sorry, but ain't nothing else I can do for you. And I said, nothing else you can do for him? I said, you didn't even make him, but you're going to tell me when he's going to die. You're going to tell me my husband's finna die. He said, ma'am, we've done all we could do for Mr. Williams. And I was trying to accept what this man had to say, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't accept it. And I called, no, I went to bed that night. I was in a rocking chair. And I kept getting up during the night, going over to the bed where Hurley was. And he, he, Vizzo, he wasn't there, okay? And I looked at him and I thought about me, it was over well, for me. I was really feeling sorry for myself that here I'd been giving this husband for 40 years and now I'm finna lose him and I didn't know what I was gonna do. And be, be honest with you, I didn't know what to do. I was praying, and it seemed like it wasn't doing nothing. And I was by myself. Even down to the room was dark, and the hospital got lights in it, but it was dark where I was. It was just dark. And I remember, I said, what in the world am I going to do now? Hurley is my world. 
and I don't have nothing else. And all I could think, all I could do was cry. And I did cry that night, cried that morning. The doctor called and they said when morning break, we were going to unplug him. Mm. And I had in my mind, we're going to set this over. He's going to unplug nothing because I'm going to bring everybody to the hospital. And that's what I did. I called Sharon. Actually, I called my mom and dad's house because that's where Sharon was. And I called my son. I called all of Hurley's sisters. He has five sisters. And I guess they contacted their children. But all of us was in that, that intensive care unit. Um, and the doctor came in, first thing he said to me, he said, uh, Ms. Williams, did you explain this to everybody? I told him I had nothing to tell him because Hurley's going to live. And then he decided he was going to tell them that he was going to pass on, that they were going to take him up. I told him, no, you're not. And, of course, my son being who he was, I know he won't take him. Sharon daddy from her and June daddy from him and mama right behind him. And I just told him, I said, I tell you what you can do, though. You can call Duke's Hospital and get him put in Duke's. And he said, Miss Williams, we can't just take a patient to Duke's. You have to have permission to bring a child, bring a, a patient to Duke Hospital. I said, well, then you need to call him. So he did. He went to the phone. And he came back to me. And he said, Miss um, Williams, I'm waiting on a call from him. By this time, Sharon says to me, out of the blues, Mom, Deuce going to accept dad. They accept the daddy. And I'm looking at her. The doctor ain't told me that. And I said, what are you talking about? Mom, just don't say nothing. The hospital uh, is going to accept daddy at Deuce. I took her at a word. I said, oh, amen. The doctor finally come back out of his little office, and he said, uh, Miss William, believe this or not, I said, they're going to take Hurley. And he said, yes, ma'am. He said, not only are they going to take him, they're going to come and pick him up. So all of us went down. Well, they all went down into the family room. I stayed up there with Hurley waiting for the people to come. Finally, I called Pastor. That was one of the things I forgot to say. I called my pastor before everybody left because I was at a, a, a dead end. I really didn't know what to do as far as with my prayer. I've been in church all my life. And it came to a point where I didn't know what to do. I'm serious. I didn't know what to do. Pastor, we had just got through teaching on when somebody dies in a family, how are we supposed to act? Well, I'm going to get on that bandwagon of, you know, I'm going to have my head up, and I'm just going to carry this thing through like I was told you're supposed to do it. Didn't work. It did not work. The natural part of me just, I fell apart. I fell apart. And Pastor walked in and he looked at me. And that made me sure cry even more when I see my pastor. And he said, It's all right. It's all right, Sister William. Everything going to be all right. And I told him what had taken place. And they were coming from Dukes to take him back to Dukes. I didn't know they was coming to operate until they got there. Mm. And then that's when they did what they did with the machine. But still, we don't know nothing about the machine. They just told me they're going to operate on Hurley. And that's what they did. And we waited. Finally, they said that we were ready to take him back to Dukes. And we all jumped in vehicles. And we had a train going back to Dukes, going to Durham. Jumped in, and we got there. We didn't see him before 2 a.m. that morning. Everybody was sleeping out on couches. Yes. Well, one of the things that is so important that we haven't talked about, and that is how, how it overcame you. That, that you know, you've been in church all your life, you heard about Jesus all your life, and, and, and all those things. What happened to your faith? This passage, just like the, um, one of the scriptures I was just reading on, actually you was teaching on it Sunday. Talked about how you get the word and yes. your joy, you get it. It's joyful when you get it. Yes. And then after a while, Satan comes and he'll snatch it. 
And I really did feel that there was a fight going on for his life. Yes. For his soul. Yes. When he got sick. Yes. Because it seemed like every time that he get blessed, all of a sudden something bad would happen. And I just felt like, oh, my God, all this stuff. I've been in church, but I still didn't know nothing. I did not know a thing. Being as old as I was, here I am married to this man 40 years. He's sick, and I'm supposed to be a helpmate. I couldn't help him. Okay. When you got to Duke and you saw him, what happened? Oh, it got even worse when I seen him. I walked in, and I seen this great machine that was on him. And they told me what it was. And the doctor said that it was called an ECMO machine. And I was like, what is that? Ma'am, this machine we put on Mr. Williams, it is going to go through his groins and it's up to his lungs. Where his lungs are hard, it's going to take the place of his lungs. And we've never had anyone to live after being put on the ECMO machine. And I did hit him in his chest. And I said, well, guess what? Hurley Weaver gonna live. Yes. I said, and guess what? You gonna be famous. You gonna get famous over this. Yes. Yes, sir. I say, you are being used by God and he gonna stand him back up. Yes. And he told me, he told me, I like that. Yeah. He said he yes. liked that. Yes, yes. I think that Saturday, my wife and I came up and, um, went by to see him and uh, he was swollen so and the fluid was running every direction that initially you couldn't recognize him. Mm -hmm. You really couldn't. And so we came back and uh, we told you that uh, because he wasn't a member of our church, we didn't have the spiritual authority. True. But I said that, uh, but his pastor said something to me and I was going to inquire, inquire of the Lord. And um, that night we went in and we did. We asked the Lord for the opportunity to believe God for your recovery. Yes. And so uh, we didn't hear anything initially. Mm -hmm. But at 430 that morning, my eyes popped wide awake. And the Lord said to me, command the devil to take his hands off Hurley Williams. Mm -hmm. And so we did. And I text uh, his daughter and say, expect a miracle now. Mm. And uh, that was the initiating of it. Yes. Uh, when God gave us the spiritual authority. And, and that's what we have to understand. See, we can be praying and praying and praying and praying, and we never see very little happen. And many times oh. it's because, see, we are overstepping the bounds of the spiritual authority that is set up. That's very, very important. And so I submitted, because at the hospital, his pastor came out the waiting yes. room, yes, he did. was heading to the bathroom, yes, he saw did. me, you and Sharon were standing in the hallway, and he came over to me and said, brother, they are all yours now, and he walked out the hospital. Amen. Yes, he so did. So when I went quiet of the Lord, I said, now, Lord, he's not my member, but now she's my member. Yes. And, sir, he said, it's all mine now. May I have the opportunity to believe you for his recovery. Amen. And so that morning at 4.30, God gave it to me, yes. and we began to believe God, and the war was on, praise Amen. God. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. We entered the faith zone, and we locked in, and we began to believe, and we began to stand, and, and things began to happen. Though the devil still tried some things. Yes, he did. You know? It's serious. When I say a real fight, for the first time in my life, I could really see a fight going on. Every time he would get blessed, guess what? Then his sugar would shoot up to 800. Mm. I said, oh, my goodness. I called Pastor again. Pastor, I need, I need you. I need you. I need your help. I need your faith. My son-in-law was there one day. And Hurley went through another crisis. They had curled him down to see that he had any brain damage because his blood pressure had shot up and he coded. Curled him downstairs. Now, when they would take him out of the room like that, they would let me go. They just told me point blank, you can't go. <laughs> Ms. Williams, you can't follow us. I said, okay. But if I could, I would have. They curled him and they brought him back to the room and then tell us to wake him up. 
in the world we finna wake somebody up where you don't put them to sleep like you just uh, anesthesia, whatever that they give them. Yeah. And Tony was waking his dad-in-law up, slapping him. <laughs> I was slapping too, <laughs> trying to wake him up. And he would wake up, but then he would go right back out again. But we worked on trying to get him woke. Finally, it worked. Then they come back to let us know, Mr. William did not sustain any brain damage. Yes. And we thinking everything is good now. It's, we, we, go, we going home. I called pastor. He said, Sister Williams, are you going to believe God or are you going to believe them doctors? I said, I'm going to believe God, but that's words, y'all. It's amazing when you start going through everything that you thought you had or thought you knew. You got to have somebody to help you through it. Yes. I you know, thank God one, for you, One master. of the good, thank you, my sister. I have to thank God for you, too. See, one of the things we have to understand, I, I look at the process the same way I did going through school. They gave us information, and they gave us information, and they gave us information, but then they gave us a test. Ooh. And the test was the thing that demonstrated how much information you knew. Mm -hmm. And so you can read the Bible, you can talk about the Bible, you can go to church. That's right. But you don't know what you really know until, until you face the test. Amen. Now, if you can pass the test, you got it. Amen. But the devil will test to see Ooh, whether yes, you have it. And, 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 and let's go through this process now to his recovery. And now, once we uh, begin to see some things stabilize, mm -hmm. then we begin to start working on organs. Yes. Okay? So, you know, we, we had to get that heart going. Yes. Because there was a real struggle with the heart. And, uh, and so finally, the heart started being normal. Yes. And, uh, but this was about, what, a three-month process? It was three months. Yes. Yeah, so it wasn't like, you know, he went in one day and, you know, we just... And see, sometimes... People forget in the church how to operate in the kingdom. The kingdom flows by a law of progression. Amen. Jesus says, you know, that first the blade, Amen. then the corn, then the full corn in the Amen. ear. And so we work the process. Yes. We say, let's get that heart going. So we focus in there, praise God. And now, he was in a medical-induced coma, and uh, we were talking one day, and, uh, and Sharon said, I ain't going home to my daddy open his eyes. That's I think he told said. me that. Yes. And I said, well, okay, well, praise God. She ain't going to them. Well, let's get his eyes open. Amen. And so I, I you know, I just, I just released my faith. Yes. And I told you, I said, today he opened his yes, eyes. Yes, you did. Now, I didn't pray about it. Because we see, see, when you have the faith of God, and you know how to work the faith of my God. My Lord. And I remember the situation with Moses. He had a mountain on both sides, the Egyptians coming I behind mean. him, and the Red Sea in front of him. And he ran up to the mountain to pray. And God said, why prayeth thou? Mama. You don't need to pray. You need to use what I gave my you and Lord. get the Red Sea. Amen. So I, so I just released my faith. I say he opened his eyes today by 12 o'clock. Sure did. Praise God. And by 12 o'clock? He had the eyes open. Those eyes open. Yes, Praise he God. was. And then we moved on a few days later, and I called you that Sunday morning. We were in church, and I yes. wanted all the saints to encourage you, and everybody was praising God and encouraging you and things like that. And when I got ready to hang up, I say, um, Sister Carolyn, he'll talk today. <laughs> and you yes, know what you, you told me? Yes, sir. Pastor, how can my husband talk and he got tubes in his mouth and his here nose. and there? And you, you list all this litany <laughs> yep. of why he wouldn't. Yes, sir. And what I told you. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't care what he got in him. That's He's going right. to talk today. You sure said it. <laughs> and what happened at 430? He talked. He started talking. <laughs> Praise God. And you called me just a hollering and screaming. I tell you, I and was then, happy. <laughs> but, then, but then you talked about me. I did. I was sorry. <laughs> I did. I said, when you called me, I said, Pastor done bumped his head. <laughs> and I'm looking at him, and he going to talk? But, Pastor, I thank God. Yes. Well, see, one of the things we have to understand, see, the faith of God and real faith isn't about questions. True. See, real faith is a certainty. Faith. 
It's basically real faith is based on knowing. Amen. See, and so when you have the faith, you know what's going to take place. Amen. All you need to do is say what will happen. And it happens. And that's how God did. And, and so that's what we have to understand. When we are operating in the faith of God, when we go in our faith zone, we know what will take place. Amen. Praise God. And so in the process, he, he, he started talking, and, <laughs> and now we got to get his pancreas and yes. his liver yes. and all these other organs going. And praise God. And then after some things started working, he still couldn't walk. Nope. He had to go physical couldn't therapy. Couldn't walk through it. I'm talking, I had to learn how to walk yep. all over again. Yep. Praise God. But what do we say? Heal, he heal and walking. Walk heal and walking, yes, praise God. And he, I'm telling you, he started walking. God restored the strength in his legs, and he started walking, and then you couldn't stop him walking. You got tired, didn't you? Yes. And I, stayed in the room. I did. Every time you call, he said, where Brian? I said, walking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so finally, you called me one day, and we came up, and uh, one Saturday, my wife and I, mm -hmm. and uh, you say, Pastor, we can go home if we get these uh, kidneys. kidneys working. And so uh, we said, no problem. And we told Brother Hurley, say, will you bend over, please? <laughs> yep. Brother Hurley bent over. We laid both hands on those kidneys, demand them to function in the perfection they was created. Oh, and, uh, and the kidneys start kicking back up. And then you told say, Pastor, we tired. We want to go home. Yes. And I think that was a Sunday afternoon you yes. called me and told me. And I said, um, well, you'll go home by Wednesday. Sure did. And on Tuesday, what happened? Everything started working. Everything started working, and you packed up and yes, done what? Yes, yes. Packed up and packed went up, home. Packed up, went and pulled a car out of the deck, put it in the front <laughs> of the hospital. I said, y'all can't change it, man, because I'm out front. I'm waiting to go. <laughs> and one thing about those kidneys, yes, sir. they were better than the words. They were better friend. than the words before. That's what they told me. Praise God. Isn't God That's good? That's what the doctor Praise what God. told me. Yes. And the doctor shared with you that the blood, the acid level in your blood was yeah. the same, same as, as the acid level in the dead, dead man. man. So they knew that you were dead. But isn't it wonderful? God raised you from he the brought dead. Him back. Yes, you yes. are alive. Yes. You yes. are well. Yes. Praise God. Yes. And to God be the glory. Yes. And remember, the name of yes. Jesus is above, above every everything. name. So no matter what circumstance you face in life, the name of Jesus is above, above it. it. Praise God. So we just thank God for it and so delighted to have y'all with us today. And we give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen.